Okay, now it's actually recording. All right, so uh, if you weren't in class, uh, when did you register? Did you, do you have these announcements? Like, did you receive email on these? Yeah. Okay, so go to those things and go to uh, weekly notes. Click on weekly notes. And uh, first of all, in weekly notes, you're going to see for every session that we had, you're going to see one is created over there. Uh, that is essentially what the, the code of what I talked about in the videos. So scroll down into the playlist, um, um, see all those things and do it, apply it on your computer. Um, and it starts right from here. Why it got mishmashed? So wait a minute. So this has to go up to. There you go. So it's what, see, it's week one, part one. That's the first lecture down here. All right? You click on it, and you're going to hear my ugly voice saying all this stuff that I'm supposed to say. So, all right. Are we okay? Cell phone's off. All right. All right, so I want to start lecturing. I want to start talking about whatever we are talking about. And whenever I'm doing stuff, I do it on a computer. So you're going to see uh, me live writing the code. And it's not uh, rehearsed. I don't have any code ready, so I'm going to write it right in front of you. You'll see how things are happening. It has good, two good things. Number one, I cannot bring anything quickly and say, this is what, and then this is this. So I have to literally do it. So one of the most important thing uh, if you could, it's kind of a paradox. If uh, boresome is good, okay, it starts your intelligence, okay. If you are not bored ever, it means you cannot develop. Your boring time when you are bored, it means your brain starts working, wandering, and that means your brain starts working. So it's good. Now, if you could divert that boresome to what I'm typing, then it's going to be amazing. What happens is that when I'm writing a code, I'll write a code. I'm not a good typist, so you're going to see I'm going to slowly write the program. So you're going to follow the program. And you can say, I type it already. And doing something like that in your mind kind of helps you to get the thing more better. Sometimes when the code is too big, then I bring a chunk of code and I just edit a piece of it, the part that I want to focus on. I'll try to, to um, uh, kind of uh, work on previous stuff, which means I do something here. And then I take it to the next session, and I make it better. And I take it to the next session, and I add features to it. And I keep going like that. And like that, hopefully, uh, 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 you have some kind of an idea of what is the big code. So the small piece that I'm changing is going to make sense for you. As soon as you put your butt on that seat, it's as if some magic happens, and you procrastinate. That's what students do. Okay, if you don't know what's procrastination, it means you're leaving the stuff for the last minute. And that's in students' blood. If I sit over there, I'll do it myself. Okay, as a result, I'm asking you, begging you to not to do so. And all the things that we do and force you to do a quiz every week and stuff like that to try and make you study from the beginning. If you study with the pace that I am teaching, okay, believe me, you're going to get an A plus and pass it easily. If you leave things at the end, either you're a genius and you pass, or you're going to fail. If you're a genius, come on, go study yourself while you're here. Right? So, so and, and another thing that I have to tell you, you are students. You are supposed to not to know. OK? So when I ask, uh, who doesn't know? I see nobody's doing this. Means, well, what are you doing here? Then get out. OK? So if you don't know, you have to tell me. OK? Don't worry, it's not going to be less of you if you don't know the subject that I'm teaching. You're, you're here because of that. OK, so keep that in mind. And enough pre preaching. So I'm going to start Visual Studio. Again, as I told you, I'm going to start the, the uh, uh, first few sessions. I'm going to keep creating the, uh, the, the project so you can see how it's done. So you start Visual Studio, Studio 2017. Install it on your computer. You have your computers at home. Install it. The uh, uh, how-tos are there. It went to the other screen. Let me bring it over here. Okay. 
this is the only way that you can start the project. Don't try other things because it's going to create it with different configuration. And then because you don't know too much about it, it's going to confuse the heck out of you. So follow this thing every single time. So, uh, file, new, project. And then uh, depending on when, if you follow the installation that I told you, you're going to only have Visual C++ over there and nothing else. But if you come to school, because Visual Studio is used for many different things, you may have lots of different languages over there. Find Visual C++ and, and get into it. Although we are studying C, we said that C++ is child of C, and C is mother of C++. So C++ knows everything that C knows. The other way doesn't work. So with a C++ compiler, you can compile a C program. But reverse can't happen. All right? That's why we are using, using using Visual C++. OK, that's why we are using C++, Visual C++. Now, uh, we need to have a Windows desktop, and you are using Windows Desktop Wizard. That's what you are creating, OK? So using that wizard, you are uh, creating the project that you want. The first step is to make sure nothing is checked in here. And then click on Browse. And three years later, find the place you want to put your program in. In my case, it's going to be in Documents. Seneca, IPC144, and your sections note. I have cloned the repository that we have on GitHub on my computer. So what I do, I save the files in here. Then I simply ask Git to sync the two. It gets everything that I have over here and pushes it up into GitHub. Therefore, you're going to have all the changes. And if I make any changes to it, I can simply say apply the changes, and it applies the changes up to GitHub. So what you see over here is literally a clone of what's on GitHub. GitHub is the master repository. Mine is the local one. Okay, The two identical repositories get synced with each other. All right? And if you do understand what I'm saying, don't understand what I'm saying, don't worry. You're not supposed to. Just get used to the buzzwords. Okay, And as the time passes, you're going to get used to it. So 01 September 4, that's the one. Quiz is the one that I wanted to put up. It's not up there. It's not synced, as you see. It doesn't have that green flash thingy on it, check mark in it. That's why you don't see it up there. You, when you see it up there, it means it's the time you actually do the quiz. And I'm going to send you a notification for it. Again, you do that quiz in your good time. And tomorrow is your lab, right? So tomorrow when you're coming, you're going to actually do the real quiz. That is quiz number one. OK? So do that quiz. So tomorrow when you are coming, you are doing quiz number one. On what? On week one. Right? Material on week one. Perfect. So I want to create, select this folder. It's going to create uh, the project in this folder. And because today is the second one, I'm going to put 02, September 10th. OK? And I have the thing ready. I click on OK. And three years later, it's going to ask me if I want these things. The only thing you want is empty project. Remember, nothing else should be checked. Just empty project. Click on OK. And three years later after that, it's going to actually create your uh, project and ready to go. Now, when you have that project created, you can add files to it, either the files that you already written somewhere else. You can bring it here, or you can create a new one. In this case, we're going to create a new one. So I'm going to right click on source files. And on source files, I'm going to say add new item. Add new item. And sorry, wrong place. There you go. I'm going to say add new item. And then I'm going to select C++. But because I don't want C++, I want C file. You see the extension of C++, it's CPP. You don't want that. You want C, all right? So I'm going to name it, say, PRG.C. So that becomes the C file I want to use. Hit Enter, and I'm going to have the file created for me, all right? Let me bring up my cheat sheets at right side so I can actually do the things properly. I am pausing the Now, I'm going to uh, write the program. Yes? I don't have that white code. It's blue. I did the same thing. You're actually doing it now? 
in the lab, if you can't get it, then I'll let you. You have to right click up in the lab. This is not the lab, this is the lecture, okay? You can see the video, but sure. In the lab, I'll tell you exactly how to do, okay? Um, so, uh, so we have the file, now we can actually start coding in it, okay? Now, whenever you are coding, because you need to be able to, in our class, okay, and later on in life, you may don't need to do this, but in our class, 99.9999999% of the time, you need to print something or you need to read something from the keyboard. Because of that, you need to be able to do input and output. Because you need to be able to do input and output, you always need to tell to the C compiler to bring the standard input output library in so you can do so, okay? Now that include, in so to tell to compiler, whenever you hear, I wanna tell to compiler, okay, what is the compiler? You can say pass, remember? If you don't remember, it caught you by surprise, you can say pass and then the victim's gonna be the next person. If you don't like him, you can say pass. <laughs> I can actually ask him, what is a compiler? Uh, basically what turns your code itself into Machine code. So essentially, it's what was the one that translates. This is what I'm going to do. So people usually on front seat as the people that get victimized before everyone else. So my apologies on that. But compiler is the one that compiles your source code into machine code. Yes. Um, I believe it's referred to the operating system. Is that correct? No, no. Operating system is the, the is the god of the compiler sitting, taking over all the world in a in a in a in the computer. One of the programs that that god that operating system is running is a compiler. So you see, like you see this Visual Studio? This is a program. Who's the boss here? Not this one, but this one. You see this big head? That's the one. So this, this operating system, Windows operating system is everything that runs within, okay? So, so, so compiler, is what compiles what we have, right? It's not, so you, you have two different type of language over here. You haven't, you haven't even started writing a program. Now you see you have to talk to two different people. You have to first tell the compiler how to compile your code and then ask it, start doing so. Okay, it's like, <coughs> it's like you, sorry, it's like you ask the server to come and help you in a restaurant, but before that you tell them how do you want your egg. I want egg, but I want it over easy, okay? So they're gonna bring your egg, but you want it over easy. So beforehand you have to tell to the cook how to do it over easy, and that's what happens. So whenever you want to tell to compiler what to do before compiling your code, you put a number sign or hashtag, right? So you put that thing on, and then you say include. It means Mr. Compiler or Mrs. Compiler, please uh, bring standard input output in. Okay? And now that it's going to include standard input output, your C program can actually communicate with outside world. If you didn't have that one, then it just com could communicate with, it with itself. It's as if you sit and you think. Did you know what I thought about? Two seconds ago? No, because I didn't include the standard input output. So if you just sit and think, it means you didn't include the standard input output. But because I'm talking like crazy, it means that is included. I can actually communicate with outside world. So thoughts only doesn't need standard input output. It means functions want to talk with each other and doesn't say anything outside. They don't say anything outside. But if you want to either give something outside or take something from outside, you do standard input output header file. Computer science is evolving, you know that all. Right? Like, every single day something new is coming out. Uh, C language is like hieroglyphs when it comes to language of humans. It's so old, okay? It's one of the first high level languages, powerful languages that came out. Um, because of the fact it is evolving too and they are making it better and better as it goes. And because of that fact, some old stuff considered not obsolete only, but some old stuff are considered 
dangerous to use. Okay. C language is a powerful language. It means it can work in two different ways, high level or low level. Okay? If it's high level, it means you are talking to it closer to how you talk to another human being. Therefore, it takes care of all the details. Therefore, less cryptic mistakes can be made because you are leaving that to the compiler and compiler knows how to deal with it. But if you go low level, which means you try to talk how the computer talks with itself, then you, make, make, you may make a mistake and the compiler won't catch it for you. Therefore, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot. Okay? So those type of things that you can shoot yourself with the foot in are by default in new compilers kind of prohibited restricted okay to tell the compiler hey I know what I'm doing okay please don't bother me you have to tell the compiler this CRT CRT means this okay it means console input output okay secure No warnings. No warning. Okay? So CRT secure, no warning. It means I know what I'm doing. Please don't give me warnings on these things. Don't, don't, don't stop me. Now these this thing, if it's not there, you're gonna get you, you won't be able to even compile and read anything. So that is not needed when you print something, but when you read something, you need that. By default, I put it at top of everything. So these two lines, memorize them. You're going to use them for every single program that you write up to half of the semester. And after that, you're going to see some places you don't need them. But standard input output header file, you need it at all times when you want to do input and output. First line defines CRT secure, no warning is needed when you are doing input. Okay? When you are using specifically the function that does input. And now that I went through all this thing, let me actually write a program. Okay, so we said. C is language of functions, and you can write functions with it. But one function is the most important one that you need to always have, and that's the beginning of everything, where everything begins. The name of that function is main. That function returns an integer to its master. Who's the master? My lady said it. Who's the master? Who's the master? Operating system. Operating system. You went philosophical, my friend. CPU is the brain of us. a completely different story. That's, not, that's hardware. We are not doing hardware. We are just doing software. So operating system, it returns that integer to operating system, telling to operating system how things ended. We don't need to do that. We are not that pro yet. We just have to do it for the heck of it. That's why we don't return anything specific. We always return zero. That's all. We just return zero. That's it. And what does it receive? from operating system, nothing. So this is a function that doesn't receive anything from operating system and returns always an, a zero to operating system. Why? Because the sky is high, okay? So again, another thing to memorize. An empty program for you is this. A program that does nothing is this. You can compile it. How do you compile? Hold the control key, hit F5. It, it not only compiles, it checks the errors, compiles, links to the operating system, executes and shows you the output. Okay? Yes, sir. Sorry, um, why do you put in a main and void? Can you explain again, please? Why do I put a void in front of main? Yeah. Okay. The parentheses is the mouth of the function. Right. Where everything goes in. Behind it is this bum bum, where things come out. Okay? This doesn't get anything from outside and returns only a zero. That means I don't want anything from your operating system and everything ended normally. So you are neither getting anything from operating system and telling to operating system everything was smooth, no matter what, because we don't know how to do it yet. Do we not uh, already define their CRT secure no warning? So that has nothing to do with this. Oh, okay. That means the way I'm reading doesn't bother you. Right. Okay. <laughs> the, see, ah. Uh -huh. Thank you. The first mistake about communication between functions and outside work just happened. CRT secure no warnings tells to the compiler 
that my communication with outside world, the main, can pr print stuff on the monitor, get things from keyboard. It has nothing to do with other functions. I can have another function that communicates with main. The two, p as if you hear something and you see something. You have two functions in your body sending information to your brain and you do something with it. Or you hear hello, you answer back hello. So the function of hearing is hearing is hearing something. The action gets processed and you see in the answer you have to output hello. So the information inside your brain, which is your hearing connecting with your vocal cords to see what's going on, that's happening inside the computer. You can't see it. But as soon as I say something, that's where secure no warnings come in or when I hear something. So what do I want to do? I want to uh, do math, okay? I want to, uh, first let's write something, the hello world thing, and then we'll continue. So I'm going to say, oh, uh, when you are writing a program, things happen line by line, okay? So first of all, line one and two, it's never going to happen. It has nothing to do with our program. It's my secret conversation with compiler. That has nothing to do with my program. Just asking compiler, I want my eggs done over easy. It has nothing to do with what, how my program works, right? So in my program, in that function, I can write things. I can say printf one and go to new line. And I can printf three and go to new line. And I can printf two and I can go to new line. And when I run this beautiful program of mine, we've already done printf, right? When I run this beautiful program of mine, what's going to happen is this, 1, 3, 2. The program is not working properly because I'm an idiot. I'm saying 1, 3, 2. I have say 1, 2, 3. Program cannot decide which one's going to happen first. Programs, lines, gets executed line by one line regardless of what you're asking. Okay, so a program can never decide what is wrong or right. It's your choice to do it properly or not. Okay, it's your logic. Again, remember, computer is the dumbest thing that is out there. Okay, you have to instruct it well so it can do good stuff for you. Otherwise, it's garbage. Okay, exactly my point. I have three lines, line number one, line number two, line number three, which in this thing is row four, five, and six. First, one is happening, then three, then two. I made a mistake. I should have had two before. Three. Are we okay with this? So do we know how, how the computer runs stuff? All right. At any moment when you want to do something in your program, you need to process anything. Let's say I want to add two numbers. I want to add two numbers and tell, tell, to the, tell to the user what is the sum of the two numbers, five and four, and I'm going to say 62. Okay, of course, that's wrong, but I'm trying, right? So I want to get five and four, and I'm going to tell the user nine. That's the sum of the two numbers, right? I want to do that. So first of all, I have to organize my thought, okay? If I want to do that, first I have to tell to the person who's sitting behind the computer, enter two numbers, right? Then I have to read the two numbers, correct? So I want to get two coffees from Tim Hortons, right? First I have to go to the counter. If I just stand over there like a stupid person, the guy's going to say, what the heck? I have to ask what I want. So the first thing you need to do, you have to tell to the user, which in this case is the person working in that team hoping to do something. Can I have two coffees, please? Okay, or you're going to be specific, double, double, and I don't know, one milk, whatever. Okay, then what happens? Let's say we are all people who want to save our environments, and we don't want to get those disposable cups that I have over there, I'm drinking water out of it you actually bring your own cups, right? So you actually give your cups and they fill your cups with coffee and you get it and you get out. So to get coffee from Tim Hortons, you need the two cups. If you don't have a cup, you cannot put the coffee in your hand, right? You need cup to get something. It's the exact same thing in a program. If you want to get two numbers, you need two cups to put the numbers in it. Otherwise, you can't process it. 
okay? Those cups, the things that you put values in, we call them variables. Now, variables are entities in which you can hold numbers, okay? And variables in C language are divided in two categories, two main categories. Integer ones and what is the other one? 14.1 real ones, right? So we have integer numbers which they have, don't have any partials. 4, 5, 9, 2, 6, 3, 52, 9 million. And then we have what we call floating point numbers. I'm going to use the computer terminology, not math. So I'm going to say floating point numbers. And floating point numbers have partials. 3.52, 9.65, okay, 82.33. Variables are divided, the ones that hold numbers are divided, and, and I have news for you, everything is a number in, in C language, okay? We don't have anything else, so we only have numbers, and I'm going to tell you, we have to play a trick to be able to print someone's name, okay? You don't have, we don't have A, B, C, D in C language. Everything is number. A is actually 65, okay? Uh, it, we, we remember it's code, but don't worry, they're all there. It's kind of seamless and transparent for you. Just, I'm just telling you the fact right now. So, two major parts, floating points and integers. Now, integers have different sizes. As if you go, I want small, medium, large, extra large coffee, it's the exact same thing. De depending on what is the maximum amount of number that you want to hold in that variable, you can hold different sizes. Those sizes are, so if I want, I want to get two integer numbers, those sizes are, so the size of integer ones, by the way, two slashes, it means comment. It means this is not part of a program. I just want to remember something. I'm writing something here. So that means ignore. Okay? If you see two slashes, it means ignore this line, compiler. Compiler won't care what you write over there. Okay? So the smallest integer ever is called, you know it, we talked about it. Remember bits and stuff? I said they are designing to put characters, code the characters. Remember how many bits did the, the smallest integer had? Two. That's too Five. small, my friend. Bit, bit, Five. not bit. Um, yeah, keep saying numbers, one of them's gonna be right. No, seriously? Oh. Eight. eight people. Eight, remember two fours, 16, remember that? So eight. So that's the smallest thing. Why? Because they use that one to code to tag alphabet. So the smallest integer with respect to characters, they call it char. It's not actually char. It starts from zero, goes up to 255. That's how big of a number it can get. Okay. How many fingers do you see? Ten. Ten. It starts from zero, goes up to? Nine. Correct? Now let's say I want to have these fingers and tag negative numbers too. If I want to do that, from what I should start? Minus what? I want 10 numbers. It's from 0 to 9. Now you have a total of 10 digits. So minus 9, minus 8, minus 7, minus 6, 2, minus 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. And zero. so what happened to positive was? Not only negative, I want negative and positive. How many I can tag? Still it's 10, but I can start either from minus 5 or minus 4, right? Yeah. We'll start from minus 5. Minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, 1, right? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, correct? Yeah. So if I have 10 available spots and I want to set negative and positive numbers, I have to have 5 negatives, a 0, and 4 positives, right? It's the exact same thing with the computer stuff too. It's 256 possibilities, right? You either have from 0 to 255, or you have from minus 128 up to positive 127. Got it? Got it? <laughs> Got it? All right, so that's the smallest integer. Goes from minus 128 to positive 127, or it goes from 0 up to 255. So if you have that cup, the biggest number that you can hold is 127. Because by default, all variables hold negative and positive at the same time. If you want only positive, you have to actually mention something specific that we don't know yet. <coughs> Got it? 
So that's the smallest thing that we can hold. So it's going to be that one. And OK, so the next thing is, after that, it's short. It's not shorts that you wear, it's short. Short means short integer. Short integer has two bytes, which is 16 bits, which means it is going to hold 2 to power 16 numbers that is what? 65,000 something, right? So it goes from minus 32,000 something to positive 32,000 something, okay? So almost, I'm not putting, if you want the specifics, if you want to know exactly how big those numbers can be, go look at, and you need to know that you, you have to because I'm teaching you and you're supposed to answer me all those things one day. So you actually have to go here in types and stuff and in here, probably there's somewhere that we talk about all the sizes of the things that we have. There you go. Character minus AD, uh, something something. Short is from minus 32,000 something to positive. Int has two faces. It could be two bytes or four bytes. For now, it's four bytes. Ignore the first one. It goes from minus 2 billion to positive 2 billion. And long is, again, 32 bits same amount long long is 64 bits i give you i'm gonna literally let you pass if you can read this number for me right now <laughs> but, but anyways that number that up to that number so that's gonna be so that's long long and there is no long 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 or long 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 it's just long and long long okay that's it all right so those are the those are the cups the size of the cups so in our case, if we want to say how big a number we want, we have character short int long and long long. Character short is two bytes, integer four bytes, just remember that, and long four bytes two, and then long long is uh, eight bytes, which means much the biggest number integer that you can get is long long. So now that we all those things, so instead of writing all these things, I'm going to say over here, read notes. <laughs> okay, so read notes and let me actually do something okay that's better all right so 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 the size of the thing yeah so car short int long and long long so these are the ones that we have and if you want to know what they mean, go read the notes. Okay? So, usually we all go with integers because it sounds integer and integer is good and the, the size and everything is like when we say int, the best thing that we can remember is int, right? When we say integer. So that's what we do. So I'm going to say int and I have to name the variable something. So I'm going to call it num1. Always put meaningful value nav names for your variables. I hate that. I literally reduce your mark if you don't put proper names. But again, don't go bananas. Don't say int the number which I want to get from keyboard. Don't do that, okay? Put something that we understand what's going on and don't tell the story of your life, okay? Just write something that we know, okay? And I want the second number because I wanted to get two numbers, right? I'm going to say int num2. So I'm preparing the cups, right? <laughs> so I have num1, I have num2, and then I want to add them up, right? Find out what the sum is. So I need the third cup to put those two cups in it, right? The contents of the two coffees and see how much it takes. So for that one, I'm going to put another int and I'm going to call it sum. So I prepared all the containers that I have for what I need. Now I'm going to write the program. How do I write the program? Oh, by the way, let me just do something for a second. Copy. New. So what I do is this. So this is PSO. I'm going to call it 01 uh, bad sequence. Dot C. So that was the first program that I have written. Now I'm going to go for the second one. So I keep saving the names so you see what the progress of everything was. And that's what we are doing now. So again, you do things in sequence. Put yourself in computer's shoes. What does it mean? Think that you're a computer. Turn your intelligence to off 
and see how you would react, okay? The very first thing that you're standing over there, you have to tell to the person, enter first number, okay? So you wanna get the first number, right? So that's what you're going to do. We know how to write stuff, so I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna say printf, enter, oh, we cannot say enter first number because it's gonna get surprised, right? Think about it. Like you go, somebody, you see somebody, somebody say, enter first number. So, what do you want from me? Okay, first you have to tell what is the purpose. You gotta say, I want to add up two numbers for you. Give me the first number, okay? You are kind of introduce yourself. So you have to first say what the program does, otherwise the person's gonna get confused. So, uh, calculating, calculating sum of two numbers, okay? Exclamation mark, be happy. And now I say printf, enter, first, number and I put a column and I don't go to new line because I want to give it to me the first one goes to the number the second one prints it puts a column and the cursor blinks wait for them to enter right now that they are doing it I have to get the number correct I don't know how so I'm just gonna say read num one I'll do it later this is something that you need to learn when you are programming do not Clutter your brain by thinking about things that you don't know and how they're supposed to be done. If you are writing a program and you reach to a stage and you don't know how to do this, just write what's supposed to be done and continue. And when you're finished with your story, then come back and see how am I supposed to do that. Otherwise, you're gonna lose the chain of thought. Okay, now I'm writing three line code, no problem, but you're gonna write a code that is 15,000 lines. If half is every single time you want to wait and say, what am I supposed to do now? Then you're going to forget what you are doing. So do that. Procrastinate when you're coding. It's good for you. When you are coding, not coding itself, right? Within your code. Procrastination is good. So read number one. Then I'm going to say, now that I read number one, I'm going to say printf, enter second number. Okay, the second number I want to read, so I'm going to say read num2. Now I read the second number. Now I have to find out what the sum is, right? That I'm going to teach you how it's done, okay? All right, first of all, something that you need to know. This, what is this? Equals, okay, it's not the same as math. This is not equals, this is called set, okay? This is called set, it's an, you're requesting an action. You're telling the compiler to do something for you. In mathematics, like just think about it over here. In math, if I do this, what does it mean? That means you're nuts. Because n goes with n, 0 becomes 1, right? 0 is equal to 1. So this is not math. Okay, this is set. Okay? In computers, this is a very valid thing to do. You'll find out why. Okay? But in, this is not math. Assignment means set. Essentially, you have two steps. Step 1, when it's done, whatever is in here goes to step 2. So at left side, you have the empty cup or the cup that you want to overwrite, at right side you have what you want to put in it. Therefore, if I want to find the sum, I have to say sum is set to num1 plus num2, which means first add these two and then put the result in sum, correct? And then I have to print sum. Do I know how to print sum? No, so I'm gonna say print sum. Print. the sum is, and then print value of sum. Uh, Pardon me? Okay. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? This one? We don't have to print that one? Yeah, we do, but we don't know how. Oh. Do you know how to print sum? No. I don't know it either, so we're leaving it. Now I'm going to come back and teach the read thingy. Okay? 
So we're going to start from that, okay? Are we okay with this? So let's go back to read and understand how we are going to read something, okay? The function that reads, it's called scan actually. It doesn't read, it's scan. But scans in a formatted way, as printf printed formatted. So printf is brother of scanf, and scanf is a sister. They are very similar, but one reads, the other one prints, okay? So, if I want to read, I have to say scanf. And in here, I have to say what to read, okay? Now, what to read, what to read, tell to scanf what you want to read, is actually done through a, a kind of a, 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 what we call format specifier. A format specifier is this. So for integers, for integers, now, so if you have several line of comment that you want to put, you do it like this. You put slash star and then star slash. Whatever is between the two is comment. Compiler won't do anything. So format specifiers. For character is percent %c. For integer, it's percent %d. Okay? The rest of it for now we don't want to know. Okay? So if I say percent %c, it means I want to read a single character. If I want to read integer, it's percent %d. Okay? So in here I have to say read. In here I have to say an integer a decimal number, an integer, and then in here I have to say put it in address of num1. That ampersand that you see, if anybody calls them ampersand, I'm going to come beat you up. That's not ampersand, that is called address of, and you mention it that way, and the whole thing is going to be posted on GitHub while you're taking a picture out of it. <laughs> I'm going to post it on GitHub, you're taking a picture, at least let me stand and now take a picture. <laughs> Anyway, so, so, so are we okay with this? The video is going to be on YouTube. The code is going to be on GitHub. I'm just taking a picture. Anyway, so, so, technology. So, I'm saying read. So, essentially, this is how you say. Read an integer and put it in where num1 is. Read an integer and put it in address of num1. So, ampersand, you read address of num1. I have to... Actually, let me tell this off record. All right, so read an integer and put it in address of num1. Now, for the second one, I want to read, oh, what happened to my, pr my, my message? Did I delete my first thingy? I deleted, no, it's up here. Bad person you are. Let me just bring it down so it's right beside that. Okay. So that's format specifiers. Now, uh, again, if you go in, in here, you're going to see the format specifier somewhere. I think, oh, it's in the next one. No, this one is just types. Uh, I think the next topic goes to format specifiers. Types, calculation, and expression. So yeah, so you got to go over there and you're going to see. Anyways. So I'm going to say, for the other one, I'm going to say scanf, read an integer, and put it in address of num2. Okay? So, if I... gave you this cop, I have to tell you where to put it. Okay, could you please put it on the table? So, anytime, anytime that I give you something and I want to put you, you, and I want you to put you, <laughs> anytime I give you something and I want you to put it somewhere, I have to tell you where, correct? Yeah. Right? All right. So the second number is red. Why did I remove the thing? I shouldn't have removed the, the comment. The comment is actually good. It says read num2. And I'm reading num2. And let us let me just put that one over here. Read num1. So that's actually what comments are for. In comments, you explain what the code is doing. 
Okay, so essentially read num1, and uh, I'm gonna actually write underneath what does it mean. So when I say read num1, I actually mean scan an int and put it in the address of num1. That's how you say it. Or read an integer and put it in the address of num1. That's how you read this. Please don't say scan f percent the ampersand num1. Okay? This is something that if you say it right, you remember and you learn it. If you don't say it right, you just telling the mumbles that you don't understand. Scan of percent the ampersand num1. Go tell that to someone. They're going to think you either you're from Mars or something's wrong with your brain. Okay, so you actually say it. Scan an integer and put it in the address of number one. Num1. And we have the same thing. Scan ampersand, put it in the address of num2. Calculation we have done. So num1 plus num2 goes to, to that one. Printf works exactly like its sister, which means it's going to say printf. Now it's going to say this one is actually pr saying something. So it actually, actually have to mention, it has to say the sum is, and now right in front of the column, it wants to print the number, right? That's where it says percent %d. It means print it here. Format specifier is a placeholder for scanf. It doesn't make sense if I put some writing in, in there because scanf is not printing something, it's reading, right? But for printing, I can actually print stuff and tell what to print here, okay? And then I'm gonna go to new line. Then I'm gonna say, in that placeholder, put, number, put sum. Do I need to put address of? No, if I wanna give something to you, I'll give it to you. You have it, you don't need an address. I'll give it to you, you have it. That's what I'm doing. Okay, but if you want to, if you want to ask somebody to get something and put it somewhere, that's reading that way you need address. Okay, so if I, that's what scanf is, get the number and put it here. That's why it needs where to put it. But printf is just printing it out. It doesn't care where it is. It doesn't, it doesn't need the address to print it out. It knows it's, 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 it's the monitor and it's gonna print it out right over there. So now if I run this program step by step, which is one of the capabilities of this beautiful IDE. You press, if you look at debug, you will see it says step into and step over. Okay? Step into and step over. Okay. If I told you to walk from that corridor and, okay, and step over every class and see if it's full or not. You just walk through the corridor and look at each class and you pass by and you go, right? But if I told you step into every class and see if the podium is working properly, you have to come, open the door, get into the class, get out, go, open the other one, get into class, open and, and do su such thing, right? That's what it means in, in the C compiler when you are saying step into or step over. When you say step over, it means Get to printf and just show it how it works. Poof. It acts as if printf is one entity, it won't go inside. Printf is a function. If you say step into, it's gonna go into guts of printf and step over that one and see what's happening inside printf. We don't want that. So when you get to a function, if you choose step over, it runs that single line as one command. Runs it. But if you say step into, it goes to the printf function and starts showing you what's happening inside, which we don't want to, okay? So, I'm gonna start with F10, and when we look at F10, F10 is a step over. So I'm gonna say F10, and it compiles and it says function may be unsafe. Oh, did I put warnings? It has an S at the end, I forgot, you see that? That's Beautiful. See, that's why I'm saying I make mistakes, and it's good for you to see it. I just forgot one S. Okay, and it doesn't know what the heck is going on. It says, scanf is unsafe. Use this if you want to use it, too, so I know you're okay. Okay, I thought I did it, but I forgot that S at the end. Okay, so let me fix it. Come back up. Warning. Zzz. Okay, I have the S over there now. That's fixed. That's how stupid 
computer is. I'm like, you can see I wrote the whole thing. You just missed an S. Put the S for heaven's sake, right? You can't be, doesn't, doesn't know that, right? That's what it is. So I told you everything has to go perfect. So I'll go F10. Now it's compiling. And well, there we go. So I'm going to bring this beautiful thing right at left. And I'm going to put this one at right. And I'm going to go step by step. Let me just resize it so I can see what's going on. All right. So it starts at the beginning. And if you look at it, I'll bring mouse over num1. What does it say? Look at the number inside. It says that is the number inside. Some garbage value. It's a piece of memory, that number. I have, I, I ask the operating system, I ask the compiler to get few integers and give it to me. It's a piece of my RAM. There are some numbers in there already, so it's some garbage in there. If you don't overwrite it, the garbage is going to be there, which no worries, because when I'm reading it, it's going to overwrite anyway. You don't need to wash the cops in computer science. <laughs> when you put a new value, it cleans the old one away. <laughs> it's not going to be any residues or anything like that. Don't worry about it, okay? So it's going to say, print calculate sum of two numbers and go to new line. And it's going to print calculate sum of new numbers and go to new line. Very, very small. So I'm going to go to properties and make that a little bigger. Uh, say 24, I think, or 20. You see that? Can you see that? It's readable back there. Can you see back there? All right. So and then it's going to say, enter first number, right? And as you see, there's a dot over there. As soon as it comes, says, read an integer and put it in address of num1, see what happens. The cursor goes over there. Wait, because scanf's job is to read from keyboard. Now it's standing over there waiting for me to enter it. OK, now I have to enter. I'm going to enter 4 and hit enter. OK, now if I look at num1, there is 4 in it. You see that? So it actually got the four and put it in num1. Now it's going to say, enter second number, the exact same thing. Scan if it's going to wait over there. I'm going to say five. I'm going to hit the enter. And now if I look at it, num has five in it. Four plus five. At left, I have garbage. But as soon as this is executed, the garbage will be overwritten by nine. Now it's going to say, the sum the sum is, and it's going to print the sum out. Ta-da. OK? And I did not need to put sum over there. I could say the total is. OK? Because uh, sometimes people are very picky. They say, should I always put the name of the variable over there to work? No, no, that's not the case. It's just a message. I could say, he had the hoo hoo and I put something. It will still work, OK? I could do anything. But just to <laughs> look that I'm saying, um, I'm doing that. So we understand how things work in sequence, right? That's conversation using a good computer program that you're writing. You put yourself in computer shoes, you go step by step, and voila. Yes, sir. Um, for scanf, mm -hmm. since we're putting the variable, well, the input into an integer variable, what happens if we enter a like, character, like a letter? How, how does the system check for the type? Okay, 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 okay. Now, let me explain that. First, deep breath, baby steps, okay? C language, I understand what you're saying. There are languages that are very high level. When you actually ask for an integer, their scanf looks for an integer. And when there is not, they do something, they prevent or something. C, everything is manual. The answer is this. It didn't even ask the second one. Program goes, Woo! doesn't understand what the heck happened. OK, the result, unpredictable. This is a good thing to tell you. C language is a low level language. Every single thing, you have to program it to know. So if you wanted to actually read a number, you have to check the value, make sure everything's OK. If it's not, you have to go back to the user. Hey, idiot, you, you asked for an integer. You put characters over there. Do it again, and then keep doing it. So all these things, we'll learn how to program as we go through it. Again, this is a low-level program, mid-level program that we are writing. So everything, we have to take care of it. It doesn't know anything by itself. 
We are lucky if it can tell us something went wrong so we can detect it. Okay? All right? That was a beautiful question. Are we okay down to here? Are we okay one? Are we okay? Yes. Why could the print have uh, the sum is percent HD and, and slash n? I understand that one. But why we could again the sum? Okay. I am saying write this and put something in here. Right. What is the something? Sum. Sum. You have to declare, not declare. You have to tell what. To, this is a placeholder. Placeholder for what? It's sum. Now I could have done this. Now, let's, let, let's, let, this, oh, what's going on? Come here. Where did you go? I went to the other window. Okay. So, I, I, and now I'm going to do it like this. Take a look. I'm going to say the sum of percent D and percent D is, so now I have to put over here, num1, num2. So what happens? Num1 goes to the first plate holder. Num2 goes to the second place holder. Num3, the sum goes to the third place holder. Every one goes to the corresponding one. Therefore, now my program runs like this. The sum of this and that is that. Got it? Beautiful question again. Any other question? Okay. Do not use computer in class. <laughs> okay. That's one of the things that I do because it becomes me. That instead of learning how it works over here, you learn how it doesn't work over there. Okay. We'll come to that one. And believe me, it's much more complicated. 955 different things could be wrong because of that. Wait for it. <laughs> Deep breath. You're going to do it. Believe me. I'm going to give you so many things to do. You're going to hate me. Don't start now. Okay? Can I give you a break? Or you still have questions? <laughs> no, seriously. Any questions? You can ask me 50,000 if you want. Okay. So let's have a break. And I'm going to come and see what's wrong with your program over there. Because I know you cannot sleep tonight because of that. Okay. So let me pause this. So we learned how... Uh, we write a program, so a program essentially removing all these comments looks like this. Actually, not there. So writing a program is essentially a series of instructions that we give to the computer, and the computer goes step by step, and each uh, line is a cryptic grammar and meaning that means something to computer that does not make sense at all in our language. So that's why they call it a programming language because it's not the same as what we it's not the same thing as what we talk about. It's not the same way we talk, we talk about. We have to understand what do these things mean. That's why I beg of you to please say the meaning of what you see. Not, don't read the character in English. It doesn't make sense. Don't say uh, some is equal to that. That's not the thing. Sum is being set to those values. Say the right thing. Okay? In here say read an integer and put it in the address of num1. In here say print uh, values and then placeholders and the values are so mention what it means so it actually fits in your brain. Another thing about variables is that variables can be done in one shot which means if I am lazy instead of writing int num1 num2 I could have said I want a num1 and num2. That's not allowed in my class. In my class, every single variable has to have its own type. Why? Because I like it. Okay? You need something that you need to know. I'm sorry, I don't want to be a jerk, but usually your project manager, your system analyst, your boss is a jerk by definition, right? So what happens is that you need to learn how to change and adapt your methods to the ones of the team because the team has to understand what you're doing right the team has to understand because of that if you write something bad write something in your own way five other people have to understand what you're doing but if you write but if everybody writes the same way you a single person needs to learn what is the global way of writing so you will see that uh, 
at different places that you get hired, like if you want to, for example, go work, I don't know, for Google, they're going to give you, not give you, it's not a book, they're going to tell you, okay, here's how we write code, go over here and look at the documentation. And you see there's, it's 6,000 lines of, 6,000 page of documentation over there on how to do stuff. And of course, you write the first program that you have written and you're so proud of and you think that you solved world hunger and then and then they're going to tell you, oh, you started your variable with the lowercase. We only accept when it's with, when it's with up, uppercase. And they reject your code. And that's reality. Because no matter how good your code is, as long as other people cannot instantly understand it, it doesn't mean anything. OK? So remember, you have to cope with how your team writes code. Whenever you became the decision maker, then enforce your own code, no problem, your way. And believe me, by then you can't do it either because you are coming in and you see 900 people are writing in a specific way. You don't want to change that, right? So keep that in mind, all right? So uh, although you can do that, but in my class, every single variable must have its own type. And if the type name, the type is not obvious what it is, you have to comment in front of it, what does it mean, okay? And now back to teaching. <coughs> Expressions. We have regular math stuff, OK? So why did I remove that? Let me just put those things in. I like those. So in here, I'm going to say I have int a, b, and c. Let's do something like this, OK? Now, first of all, setting. Setting is to set something to a value. We can simply say A is set to 10, right? B is set to 20, right? And C is set to A plus B. And then I say printf C is percent D, and I'm going to put over here C. Oh. OK? What is the exact output of this program? The exact output of this program is C space is column space 30 space new line. Why? Because I did something that is not a good thing actually. I put a space over here. It wasn't the new line immediately. So when I say what is that, like if I give you something like this in a test, and I'll tell you what is the exact output of your program, if you write this, you don't get any mark. Because there's an invisible space over here, you have to mention, put something that say, so every space, sign it with something, so we know what is a space. It's important for you, okay? Output of a program is so important. The difference is, the airplane flies or crashes, one character, and it happened, okay? So you gotta be careful with these things. Computer science is a pr precise thing. Just, you don't say like, but it's just the space. Yes, it's just the space, and that matters a lot, yes. Why did you put caps on it, caps C? Why did I put caps lock over here? Yeah. Because I like it. <laughs> it's a, again, what you write over here is, is anything it gets printed it's a comment right. it's not part of my program i wrote capital c because i liked it i don't know because it was saying c is and everybody <laughs> okay something like that all right it's just that's what it means again nothing in the printing stuff is part of c the double code stuff get printed on the screen. I just wanted to emphasize on a fact that even invisible stuff, you have to be aware of them. And now expressions. <coughs> Math expressions, we have we have come on, yeah. We have plus, right? We have minus, 
That's not minus, this is minus, okay? We have multiplication that is asterisk, and we have division that is, uh, let me just change the thing. Over here, I'm gonna say um, 17, and in here, I'm gonna say five, okay? So, A plus B is? Mathematicians. <laughs> it's 22. What is A minus B? 12. What is A multiplied by B? Whatever. What is A divided by B? Three. It's 3. Again, remember, we are dealing with integers. There are no partial parts. When 17 is divided by 5, the result is? three not three point something this variable of is incapable of holding partial parts partial parts goes to waste so if i do this you'll see that the result is exactly what we mentioned right are we okay down to here now another thing that we have in math but there is no operator for this in math is modulus is this and what does that do? It tells you what is the remainder of the division. Okay? So it says if you divide 17 by 5, it's 3. And how many remains? 2. The 2 goes over there. Okay? These are the regular things that we have. <clears throat> of course, the first 4 works for floating points too. The first 4 works for floating points. This one doesn't make sense for floating points. Floating points, they go as far as they go, right? So if I have these for ints, intops.c, if I go over here, float or double, double, float at floating point variables are in three kinds. Float, double, and long double. Okay, you know what double stands for? Double precision. Okay, floating points, they use scientific notation to hold this stuff. It means 3.5692, it becomes 3 point something multiplied by 10 to power something. It holds it that way, okay? Because of that, it's not very precise. It loses some partials all the time, okay? We'll come to it later on. Double precision, it means it is more precise. Of course, because of that fish precision, it's bigger too. Read the notes and you'll see what I mean, okay? Uh, and long double is the most precise one, but never do a counting program with doubles, because at the end, you're going to always lose a penny somewhere, okay? Because it, it, you'll see what I mean. Like, you, I literally put three in A, and you go, you look at it, it's 2.9999999999, okay? It's three, but it has a little bit that is missed. Careful. Floating point variables are not precise. This float, that is eh, double, is double precision. Long double is double pre precision, but still, they are not absolute. <coughs> Remember that. Okay? And when you are printing a double, it's LF. Float is F. Please go read these things. I don't have time to tell you one by one. It's college now. I teach the concept, you read the details. Okay, as you see, it's giving me error over here. What the heck you're doing? I'm doing double. Why are you doing modulus over here? Doesn't make sense. So I'm gonna remove that. Okay, and when you do the printout over here three years later, you'll see that's the result. Okay? Are we okay with this? All right. Number four, floating ops. Let's see. <clears throat> All right. Now, 10 minutes left. Let's see if I can do it. Int, int, and int. Ladies and gentlemen, everything in C language is an expression. It's calculation, okay? 
even when you do comparison. Okay? We have operators whose job is to compare things. Okay? What I can do is this. I can say C. So I can say C is set to A greater than B. I can do that. So what it does, it compares A to B. Is it greater? Is it? Yes means 1. Okay? Yes means 1. So, this one is lowercase for you. Where are you? Okay. Just to be happy, right? You don't feel that you're left out or something. Okay, so, so now if I go over here, C is A less than B. The second one is going to be what? Are we okay with this? Go look at other stuff. We can ha we have things like we have things like this. Less than or equal, greater than or equal, and if it's equal. So two assignments back to back, it means is A equal to B? The result is one or zero, depending on what it is. Are we okay with this? All right? Now, there is something that you need to know. So these are these. Go read all the stuff. I'm gonna ask this in a quiz the next week that you're coming, and I'm gonna ask every single thing that is written over there. Half of them I missed, I missed. You have to know this, this is college. I don't have time to go through everything. You have to go study, actually. Okay? It's important. Anyway, so these are the comparison stuff that we are doing. But when C language deals with... So let me just make sure it runs. Yes? Uh... Thank you. I like that, whoever he was. It was you? Thank you. Okay. I have only, f I have only, what, eight minutes, but I have to tell you this story. I have, I have, I, my research has finished this, this, this last research. I have a, a research assistant, had a research assistant in CDOT uh, that is fully blind, okay? And he's studying computer science here. In one class I was sitting, I was writing like five lines of code, and when everything was finished, he told me like, the first function that you have written over there, you made a mistake. Blind guy. And everyone in class missed it. One blind guy said, so that was the most impressive moment of my life. Like, I was so humbled at that moment. Like, the guy who, didn't, who couldn't see, actually, I, of course, I was telling exactly what I'm writing. But the piece that I said something, it was some logical error with it, and he pinpointed it, didn't want to bother me, let me finish, and 45 minutes later told me that at the beginning you have a mistake before I compiled it. So thank you. When I see somebody catches my mistake, I'm very happy. All right, so <clears throat> that's that. So next thing. So truth in C is 1. Falsehood is zero. Okay, but when C wants to recognize if something is true or false, it's zero or other. It's false or other. When C examines something to see if this is true or not, C doesn't care if it's one or not. If it's not zero, it's true. I'll tell you why. So we have other things that we can try. So I can have over here uh, int x, and I'm going to put int y, and I'm going to initialize them. Now, did you hear what I said? Initialize them. What did I say when I call this? I am doing what to a? Setting a initializing x. Initializing. Remember this till the day you die. This is very important. Assignment at the moment of creation is not setting. It's initialization. 
it's going to come and help you when you are doing C++, trust me. Okay? So I'm initializing uh, uh, x to 3 and y to, uh, say, 5. Okay? I'm saying C greater than uh, uh, B or x greater than y. Okay, or is this, this, oh, this is, I need a thicker thing, uh, I think that one, and I need, uh, uh, red is good, or black. Okay, so this is a battery. Uh, it comes over here. That's one decision I'm supposed to make. This is the second decision that I'm supposed to make. Oh my God, I am such an artist. Okay, and then I'll go over here like that. And I'll come over here, a beautiful light bulb. And I'll go over here like that. Okay, <clears throat> now for the light bulb to go on, how many of those switches should be closed? One. If I close this one, it goes like that. If I close that one, it goes like that. If they're both closed, it goes. The only way the light doesn't go on is when they're both. This is called an or statement. Are we okay with this? This is an or statement. Like that one. Is, why is it giving me an error here? I don't know. I'll fix it later. <coughs> I'll take a look at it later. So, is A greater than B? Yes. Yes. Do I need to check the second one? No, because if the first one is right, then who cares about the second one? Right? It's going to be on. So I can ignore it completely. So that's on. Seriously, why is this thing in like that? Well, oh, it keeps putting dots for me. Undo, undo. Let me just go out of draw. Okay, so, oh, there was actually right. Okay. So now, um, what is an AND statement? An AND statement is this. So I have, let me just, I push clear all by mistake. Don't pack your stuff, I have three minutes. All right, if I, this is the battery, the AND goes like this. And then I have the light bulb. So the AND goes on only when they are both on. Got it? That's the only possibility. There is no other way. So, <coughs> clear all. We don't want to draw. So, now for this one, or x greater than y. What is this? What is this? This one? It's going to be, this is false, right? But this is, is it true? So perfect. So this is true. X is greater than one. So that's going to go false, right? All right. That's going to go false. All right. And what is this one? Again, 2 percent means and. Are we okay? Close. The battery is low. It's perfect time. All right, now, the last thing that I want to tell you, and I have two minutes to do it, and please, everybody, wait for me. All right? I don't want it to go off on me. I don't know. I don't want to go off. Okay, so it's Windows. It says 10 minutes, but it's just... Uh, anyway, so, all right, so now, let's have it. Attention, attention. Now, look at this. I can go... If I have something like this, int z, and I'm going to put 0. Yes? A greater than B? Which one are you talking about? This? 12 line. Line 12? Yes. A greater than B or X? Y greater than X. No, I don't want to. I'm not making a statement. You've got to see if it's right or not. It's not wrong. The answer is, it's, no, they're not. These two? No, one is one. The other one, A less than B, makes it zero. Because the first one is both zero. And the third one 
it's like the first one because they, because it's an and it's going to go false. Okay, please go uh, look through it uh, when you're at home. It's important. The last thing I wanted to say is this. I can say C is A and Z. A is a value. What is the value? 70. When I'm saying and, what does it mean? It means true because it's not zero. Remember, so true and zero is false, so that will be false. Got it? No. no? Anything but zero is true. Don't pull my leg. Okay, so <laughs> that's that one. Wait, 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 wait. I have, I have one more thing to do. So, and if I do all over here, then what is going to be? It's going to be true, right? Yeah. Uh, see, because I have, I have true or false, right? Now, the last, don't pack your stuff. Wait for me. Next thing, next thing, next thing. There is another thing called not. What is not? It means negate something. So I can say something like this. I can say C is equal to not A less than Z, which means negated. X is not less than Z, so that's wrong. Not false is true. It's one, right? You can use that not thingy for single variables too, which means I can do this. C is not A. What's going to be C? False. False. Because A is 17, right? <clears throat> and what's going to happen to this if I say not not A? True. True. What's going to go in C? One. Uh, not 17. It's not minus minus. It's not not. Who's there? It's not not, which means which means first not makes it one, the second not makes it zero, or the other way. This is 17. Not true is false. Not false is true. There it goes, one. Okay? Remember that. That was the last thing for today. And the next day you're coming in, we're going to have lots of fun. Please walk through these. Thank you.